Hello, my pack, my tribe. Welcome to Halloween After Dark. Brought to you by Ghost of Paranormal, by the way. Uh, tonight's show should be very interesting. And I know that there's going to be people out there that are going to differ from my point of view. I've always accepted that. And I've always said that all I can do is uh, I can't op open anyone's or I can't change anyone's mind I can only hope to open it and uh, that's kind of like the, the whole point of this show in general and tonight's show in particular is about being a force of nature what I mean by that is whether you're running a team or you're on a team that investigates the paranormal, whether it be uh, uh, paranormal claims of ghosts and apparitions, or it be, uh, you know, cryptozoology like Bigfoot or, or Nessie or what have you. It is so important to be a force in nature in any environment. Um, and we're going to talk about how and why tonight, um, but we're going to start things with why. Um, the reason being, uh, uh, particularly when you're, you're uh, a paranormal investigator that investigates hauntings, uh, I don't believe in provoking ever, ever. Uh, I, I've uh, been very vocal about this point. Um, I hate it. I think it's completely unnecessary, not to mention... Uh, you know, just completely bullshit. Um, before I go any further, though, I want to give a shout out to our lovely people in the chat room. Uh, Jeremy, Reagan, uh, and the rest of you. Uh, whoever you might be, who I don't know because you haven't spoke yet. Uh, welcome to the show and welcome to the family. Um, alright, so, anyways, uh, what I mean by force of nature is, isn't provoking, okay, I, I want to make that part very clear, I don't like provoking, I don't advocate provoking, I will stomp out provoking teams every chance I get, that's how much I hate it, because it's so disrespectful and unnecessary. Having said that, though, there are times when you kind of have to provoke. Um, like when you know that you're dealing with something that isn't good. Um, that That's pretty much the only time, personally, that I can justify provoking. But even in, like, times when everything's kosher, it's important to be a force of nature. And what I mean by that is by your... By your actions, by by your vocalizations when you're doing EVP sessions, and by your your general stance, you have to be a force of nature. And what I mean is, you cannot have any back down in you. Um, you you've got to have a certain kind of stubbornness uh, when you're doing this work, because otherwise you're leaving yourself open to all sorts of things, um, and really, uh, you know, I, I can sing the blessings of, of, of sage and blue appetite stones and medicine bags, and they all do work, by the way, but none of it means anything unless you have an iron will. And that's what I mean by force of nature. You have to have that iron will. You have to have that, that Brahma bull stubbornness. If you don't have that, then you're probably in the wrong field. 
or you should probably get it really quick. Um, some key examples of what I'm talking about. Uh, one actually just happened recently, actually. Uh, and my team members who are listening already know about this because they were there. Um, you know, I mean, uh, Reagan and Becky and whoever else happens to be listening right now. Uh, we did an investigation back on uh, the 31st of January, I believe it was. Yeah, January. Um, sorry, I'm still on native time. I, I couldn't even tell you what the date is today without looking. Um, but it was on the 31st, and we were at the Farm Museum, like we often are. Um, and we kind of ran into a situation we, we had never, ever experienced there before. Um, because always at the Fire Museum, uh, all the all the activity we, we've ever encountered has been more on the friendly side of things. And uh, one of the spirits that we were very friendly with, a gentleman by the name of Donnie, who was a Korean War vet. And I, I've told his story before on the show. Um... We got, uh, through one of our apps, uh, is actually, I was actually using the, uh, GV1 app by, that was invented by my friend Danny. Um, it's a ghost box. It basically turns, uh, your phone in, or, or wireless device into, like, a Frank's box, basically. And, uh, so I was using that, and uh, Donnie started talking to us, and, uh, you know, at the time, I didn't hear a lot of what he was saying, I mean, like, but I could tell there was something not right, like, his, his, his speech patterns were panicked, and I was, I was kind of feeling that tension, you know, and then he mentioned that somebody cracked him in the head and I said I said something about uh you know where are they and he goes behind you and I had my back to the wall so I'm like you mean on the other side of the wall and he goes yeah and so I went out there and I stood up and I said look whoever you are you need to leave Donnie alone or we're gonna have problems and I said it in a very authoritative uh, uh, way because I don't mess around with that you don't come into what is like our second home and mess with the spirits there that's a good way to get your head cracked and so uh, that's kind of what I'm it, I'm saying is like everybody whether you're the leader of the team or not needs to have at least a little bit of that force of nature in you Um, another example uh, is like when I do house cleansings and I, I really kind of want to explain what actually goes on because uh, what I do and what people see aren't exactly the same uh, what they see is they'll see me uh, walking around a home or building or what have you with a lit sage and a, a wing from a turkey that uh, is actually it's actually used to waft the smoke um, and I'll say over and over this this uh, uh, ancient Cherokee blessing uh, Uniqua creator of all worlds grant us your your blessings and protect us from all evil and I'll repeat that over and over and that's what they see but what they what they're not seeing is that it's like spiritual warfare as I'm wafting that smoke and and I'm saying those words all around me like the force of my own aura my own spirit if you will is like a force field and it's literally pushing whatever is dark 
whatever is evil, whatever is negative, out of that environment. And I would not be able to do that if I did not have that that Brahma ball iron will. That is your first line of defense in the paranormal. So, um, you know, you, you don't have to take my word for it. Um, I'm not the only, like, seasoned investigator that would tell you this stuff. Um, regardless of whether or not I agree with them on their, their, technical skills or their approach doesn't matter anybody that's been doing this for uh, you know any length of time can tell you that this is what you need and uh, good <laughs> good example of what I'm of like what I'm saying is uh, take a look at um, some of uh, the Warrens investigations that they did um, were like they didn't have a lot of the stuff that we have now um, in fact we can attribute some of the stuff we have now to them uh, they kind of invented it but uh, one thing they always used without fail and I don't agree with them uh, by the way um, on the, on their whole theology they because they're demonologists they think that uh, you know, all, basically all spirits are evil. And uh, our demon is just trying to trick you into thinking that they're ghosts, yada, yada, yada. And I don't agree with that. I never have, I never will. But one thing I do agree with is, like, everything they ever did required that iron will. Because without it, well, they, they wouldn't have been anywhere near as successful in their careers as they were um, and this is this is like a mistake I see a lot of the time even on TV shows um, okay Reagan just said something in chat I want to address uh, she says I like demonology just not the Christian point of view on it I don't like demonology and I'll tell you why I don't like demonology as a whole. It's because demonology is a Christian invention. And I don't have a problem per se with Christians. Don't get me wrong. Everybody's entitled to believe whatever they want to believe. But I do not agree with the aspect that, that uh, you know, they're all just dream demons trying to trick you, yada, yada, yada. I do not believe that uh, if a spirit is here, then it's either a demon or it's trapped. I do not believe that. I, I believe wholeheartedly that we do not lose free will once we die. Now, having said that, yes, demonology... I, shamans, for example, uh, that do house cleansings could technically fall under the demonology uh, label, I guess. But I, I just, I don't, I just don't think in those terms personally. But anyways, uh, so like I was saying, um, yeah, they had, had that iron will. And, and uh, part of that is from having absolute faith in whatever it is that you believe and whatever it is that you do. Um, and no, I agree with what Reagan just said. It doesn't have to be one point of view. It doesn't. We know that. You know, as as reasonable people, we know that. 
and I think I think that's a mistake I see a lot of the time even on TV is like there's a lack of that iron will I love ghost adventures I've, I've never been I don't particularly care for ghost hunters but I love ghost adventures but even on their show I've seen it over and over and over again where where their their will kind of collapses in on itself you know, or where they allow themselves to be uh, fearful and therefore open to whatever's there. Um, and I, I do have concerns about that. I do, but you know, once again, this is all this is all my conjecture, my my opinion, and. Uh, you know, like I said, I can't change anybody's mind. It can only help to open it. But uh, I think, uh, honestly, that without that iron will, without being that force of nature, you're setting yourself up for failure. And that's pretty much as, uh, you know, straight to the point. Um, and you do see examples of force of nature on a lot of these shows too, by the way. A good example of, of, uh, of what I'm talking about is like uh, Amy Allen from the show the Dead Files. Um, I don't always agree with everything she says. I have seen a lot of the things that she describes on the show. I have actually seen myself, so I know she's for real. I don't agree with everything she says, so. Um, but one thing I definitely do agree with is she has that iron will. She will only let like spirits affect her up to a point. That's kind of what I'm talking about. And, and, and it doesn't really matter what your particular point of view is. You could be, you know, Christian or Wiccan or Pagan or whatever. Uh, but without that iron will, you, you're kind of begging for it. Um... Okay, whoever just said, hey, how do I get into this chat? Um, you can log in. You'll see up at the top, there should be a button that says uh, uh, sign up or something to that, ex that extent. Um, so, yeah. Um, So Amy Allen is a good example of what I'm talking about. Um, she is absolutely a force of nature. Ah, okay, it's Kathy. Um, yeah, Kathy, if you if you uh, up at the top there on the top of the chat, there should be a button up there that says uh, sign up or register or uh, something to that effect. Yeah, or you could do that. Um, I'm registered because, you know, it's my show kind of pays off to be. But, uh, yeah, you can just enter your name and click save. Um, anyways. Um, everyone on my team, by the way, whether by... Uh, by desire or design, in other words, meaning whether they choose to be or not, just kind of naturally is a force of nature. Um, and a good example of who is Nora, actually, my, my lovely Nora. Um, she is absolutely fearless. 
like, not only is she the type of person we could send alone into a place, she's the kind of woman that will do it without even you asking. And be absolutely fine. In fact, the most common thing we hear in an investigation is, where's Nora? Because <laughs> she just takes off. But she does. She has that iron will. Reagan, um, Reagan, who's in chat now, um, has that iron will too. Like, uh, uh, especially when it comes to Abby, our youngest invest investigator, she will not let anything harm Abby. And Abby's starting to get there. You know, she really is. She's she's developing that iron will. And then, you know, Becca, she's already got it. <laughs> she's just like, I'm just here to hear you. <laughs> That's like her whole deal. So, you know, uh, there are... It, it is a rarity, though. You know, I, I'm very lucky that my team is my team and we are now like like we started with like five people and built up to like 15 and now we're boiled down to like five or or well six actually again and like we're bo we cut away all the fat and all the negativity so we're like this perfect team now and it can all be attributed to like this force of nature mentality because one thing I've always done is I can't claim all the success my team has as my own okay my team is what makes us great. All I did is point us in a you know particular direction. They took the all all their gifts, all of their successes are all them. You know the the this show, our web series, everything would not be what it, what it is if I did not have these particular individuals on my team. That's just a fact. So, um, I kind of embarrass them and, and, and praise them a lot, but, you know, they deserve it, so there it is. Anyways, um, so yeah, every team needs that. Regardless of what, what your particular beliefs are, it doesn't matter if you're like a Christian demonologist or a pagan Wiccan, whatever. Um, it doesn't matter. The um, only thing that matters is that that essence exists. Because without it, everything else is going to fall in on itself. And, and you know, that's, that's the paranormal world for you. You know, it you get out of the paranormal what you expect and you also get out of the paranormal what you, you uh, open yourself to and that is probably I would have to say the reason why the majority of our investigations do not entail anything negative now, there are exceptions to that rule. There are times, no matter how strong your will is, no matter what you believe, you're going to run into negative stuff. It happens. But, I know for a fact that there are teams out there that that's all they run into. Because that's what they expect, and they don't have the iron will to protect themselves against it. They are not that force of nature. And 
while while I say you know I I can't claim all the success I do claim some of it because and and I'm not trying to toot my own or, own horn here I'm just stating facts without my vision for where I want this team to be in the future without my leadership for where I want this team to be we would not be where we are and where we are is well I can't give away too many details but it's pretty damn fantastic right now like I only have six people in my chat room now and I'm not worried and the reason I'm not worried is because this show has had over 4,000 listeners that's just this month we we are, are one of the fastest growing paranormal radio shows on the net bar none our web series it has taken off like wildfire. I've got people messaging me asking when the next one is going to be. Because they love it. They love it. And I think the reason why is because we've been uncompromising about, you know, uh, certain things. Like, like we're not going to edit our content. We've been uncompromising about, about you know, uh, we're not going to ham things up or, or otherwise pander to our, our potential viewers. And, and now we're at a point where we're going to end up on TV. I'm just going to say that. And, and I don't know when, I don't know where, and I don't know who with. I just know it's going to happen. And one thing I know for certain is if and when we do, one thing I can promise everybody who might be listening and everybody who's going to listen to this later on, we will be uncompromising. Our ideals will never, ever change. And the only way I will ever do a TV show is if I have creative control. And by I, I mean I and my team. Because we will absolutely not pander to our audience. What you see is what you get, period. And also, we will strive to keep our audience as part of the team because really our audience is the biggest part of our team especially with our web series because they are the ones who are actually doing our our evidence review with the web series because we don't watch any of that footage before we put it out And, you know, when it comes to being a force of nature, I, I personally kind of mean that, like, in almost like a literal, literal way. Because, you know, personally I'm a shaman, and that's where I draw my, my ability and my power from, is from nature itself. Um... So, and th that's kind of why I went with Force of Nature as a title for tonight's show. You know, but I, I see it over and over again. That, like, most of the teams that, like, self-destruct in this business, in this uh, field of study, don't have that 
force of will. They don't have that iron will mentality, that force of nature, that, that, uh, you know, and it really, like I've said, I've co I've always referred to us as a pack or a tribe, because that's what we are. You know, and that's why we work because everybody knows where they stand, and that's the problem with, with uh, I think a lot of teams is like they they don't they're really not about the team they're about you know themselves individually within a group yeah um, they're talking in chat um, Mama Kathy says the pack is a good group on this all and then says can't wait to get with you all and meet others also and then Reagan says Jay knows a lot of people yeah yeah, I, I know a lot of people. Yeah, and she says, or they have drama, Jay. Yeah, that's true, too. And and that's where the drama comes in, uh, is because nobody is, is saying, hey, stop this. And uh, that's kind of why, like, our team has been boiled down to what it is now, is because there was drama, and we cut out the fucking drama. Yeah, but uh, Mama Kathy, Kathy says, Ours don't like it when I just jump into there with both feet, but like I try to tell them we're a team, get it through your heads. Well, absolutely. And he, and that's the thing. You need to make yourself not just a team. You need a tribe, a pack. Okay, because the pack hunts together, the pack lives together, the pack dies together and if you if you don't at least have that mentality in this field you're not going to get anywhere And that's just how that goes. Hold on one sec. But you need to be a force of nature, not just for yourselves and not just for your team. You need to do it for the spirits that you deal with. Or the in the case of those that, that investigate um, uh, cryptids or, or both like we do you need to be a force of nature for them too because while we're while we do investigate them while we while we are you know out to uh, gather proof for ourselves and while we were out there to uh, you know because like m me and my team we are not interested at all at proving anything to anybody except for ourselves um, but regardless of your stance on that you need to be a force of nature not only for yourselves you need to be a force of nature for what you're dealing with also case in point is this whole thing with Donnie at the farm museum getting cracked in the head I immediately stood up for him that's kind of what I'm talking about you you have you have to look out for not just yourselves but what you're investigating. It needs to be protected. Yeah, exactly. Um, Kathy just said in chat we're supposed to be family in a way. The way I see it to help others that need it and respect each other and stay together. Absolutely. Absolutely. See, and that, that's kind of another point I wanted to make tonight. Um, 
and it does fit right in with the whole force of nature thing is if you were in it for yourself you're in it for the wrong fucking reason if you were in it for the spirits or cryptids or what have you if that's why you're doing it then you're in it for the right reason Oh, <laughs> um, Becca just said she also got uh, one where he, Donnie, was called a coward or yellow. Well, and what she's talking about is an EBP. That is absolutely not true. Yeah, I'm not going to get into the whole Haas thing because that's just going to make me angry. Um, and yeah, I am going to be taking care of his punk ass soon. Um, as soon as we can go back, he's, he's toast. Uh, what they're talking about is, is, uh, we believe that there's an entity or spirit or whatever you want to call it named Haas. Like, like the German name Haas. And uh, he's evidently not very well liked um, because, like, everyone's calling him an asshole and an idiot. Uh, you know, all the spirits in, at the farm museum more. And uh, evidently he's the one who cracked Donnie in the head. So I'm going to be dealing with him. Um, and it, I'm going to be dealing with him using my force of nature, my, my iron will. Because I cannot use sage uh, at all in uh, in the fire museum because the fire the fire alarms would go off, you know, because of the smoke. So I'm gonna have to do it just from sheer will. And, you know, I sat here when I knew this was going to be the topic tonight. I sat here and I was thinking all the years back to when I first started. And and all the years in between. And I was trying to think of a, a time when I did not have that iron will. I was trying to think of a time when I wasn't a force of nature, or more importantly, a force to be reckoned with. I couldn't think of a single time. Now, I'm not saying that that, that time has never existed. I'm sure, you know, I'm not perfect. You know, I'm, I'm like anybody else, but... I honestly, in 20, 25 years of investigating the paranormal, I cannot think of a single time when I did not have that. I mean, yeah, there's been times when, when something kind of scared me, but I have no back down in me. I, I don't think it's even in, like, my, my, my makeup. I, I don't think it exists. You know, just to be honest about it. Yes, uh, uh, Reagan's talking about uh, this Hoss spirit. Um, referring to him as a bully, which he is. Um, and she says, check out our bids. He's been around back and forth from my house to the farm museum. Yeah, he's going to get his ass kicked. And, uh, 
anyways, um, I've only got about three minutes left in this session, so uh, like always, once I go off, stay tuned because I'll be right back with part two of tonight. Um, in which I'm going to uh, detail uh, some more about the whole force of nature thing and how it's played out in my life personally in the earliest parts of my career. Um, mainly uh, things like when I was with San Diego Ghost Hunters as well as stuff I did when I was just on my own because uh, for there for a long time it was all just me and you know whatever random person I could get to go with me uh, and sometimes just on my own so uh, we'll be talking about that and uh, I here's the thing I think when you have that mentality that uh, of like I'm talking about a force of nature uh, a force to be reckoned with nothing can really hurt you I mean yeah like paranormal investigating sooner or later something's going to touch you something might even scratch you or whatever but nothing can really hurt you. And you know, that goes for like like normal stuff too, like normal life. Like it, like if you're if you're a force of nature in your normal life, nothing's going to hurt you then either. I mean, yeah, you could probably get physically hurt, but like Like nothing can hurt your, hurt you in your mind. You know what I mean. Like you you become like so strong, so strong willed that like nothing just phases you. Um, Becca just asked, "Do you need to reload the page for part two of the show?" Um, I don't believe so. Um. But you, I don't know. I don't know what goes on with your system, so you might have to. Um, but we got uh, five seconds left, so I will see you all for part two here in just a minute. 